We begin, though, with our talk of the tape, whether stocks can keep this momentum going and build on the January gains as another critical inflation read looms large later in the week, just a couple days away. Let's ask Joe Terranova, Virtus Investment Partners Chief Market Strategist and CNBC contributor. He is right here at Post 9. Are we starting to sniff out a good CPI print on Thursday? Is that what this is feeling like? I, I think we've got the potential based on where positioning is. And I think positioning has been overtly bearish. You've got two notes that you could touch upon. There's a Bank of America note that suggested there was over $1.4 billion worth of equity sold by hedge funds, retail, and institutional. That's the largest outflow since November. And let's remember, generally, retail is a buyer in the first week of January. To see them as a seller, I think it's just indicative of the overall environment. People have been so negative, to your, people have to your been, point. People have been so negative. And look, I believe that earnings really are the ultimate catalyst for the market. Mm -hmm. Again, a great note from the desk of Goldman Sachs. You've got 32 percent of the S&P 500 in which those companies have seen a downward revision to two-year profit estimates. That 32 percent. You only see a figure like that in 2008 and 2020 over the last 25 years. So the pessimism is absolutely in place. What about what's been rallying, right? NASDAQ, the outperformer yeah. again today. A lot of the laggards last year are the early year leaders this year. Is there a tell in there? I think it's uh, I'm calling it the revenge of diversification. And I think what it signals is the trepidation that investors have in their risk assumption. They don't want to step out and concentrate back towards growth or hyper growth or the technology or mega cap names. Look, you've got China up 11 percent. You have the emerging markets up 7 percent. You've had uh, uh, several fund managers come on your program and suggest that the opportunities in fixed income so far year to date, that's actually the right play. High yield is up close to 3 percent. Investment grade is up 2 percent. So risk is is risk is there. The assumption is there, but it's just targeting unfamiliar places relative to the last couple of years. And just look at sectors, financials, materials strong so far year to date. But are we to really believe that the moment the market starts to sniff out a, a Fed pause, that money's not going to go right back to tech, to mega caps and and to growth? I think you have to get past earnings. And, and I believe that, and I, I, listen, this is, this is somewhat controversial, and I, I think I'm in the minority here, but I think Fed policy is priced in. I, I told you last week, the bond market is telling you, the bond market won already, the bond market is signaling, yes, there's a slowdown in the services side of the economy, there's a housing market that's clearly in recession, and the Federal Reserve, if they get to 5%, they are going to create an environment in the economy that's going to be unwinding welcomed. But guess what? Risk assets in 22, they, they priced that in already, Scott. They had that hard landing. So I think earnings ultimately are the pure catalyst for 2023, in particular for mega caps and technology. Right. So even if a decline, you know, hap happens from here, I want you to listen to what Paul Tudor Jones said on Squawk Box this morning about his expectations about where the market could go. We'll kick that on the other side. Here's PTJ. It'll require something negative to happen to create the stock market to go down meaningfully. He will have to, either inflation would have to be too high or he'd have to over tighten to create something, some major economic contraction to make the market go down. Absent that, uh, the market's gonna stay, the stock market's gonna stay strong. He, of course, referring as Paul Tudor Jones was to Jay Powell, uh, stock market will stay strong, barring something, you know, to unforeseen maybe that happens if the Fed totally blows it, which, by the way, he doesn't expect them to do either. Yeah, well, I think I think Paul knows a lot about fear and greed throughout his very successful trading and investment career. He's utilized identifying when fear and greed is present in the market. And has there been a time where fear has been so present as where we are in the early stages of 2022, uh, 23, rather? Um, so I, I think there has to be something more. There has to be a shock that has not been priced into the market 
market for the market not only to retreat and go back to the lows below 3,500, but to, to break below those lows and sustain there. I think the general view is, Scott, even if we go down to the lows, and I have no idea if you're going down to those lows again, but even if you go down there, wow, that's a great opportunity. If you get there, you're going to have a quick V-shaped recovery, and that's what capitulation looks like. Something exogenous has to happen for the market to go down below there and stay there.